preaching in the book of Revelation. We've been studying the book of Revelation. This is lesson 23 in this great book of the Bible. And let me give you the review, as I always do, down to the chapter where we are tonight, and that's chapter 18. Chapters 1 through 3 was the vision of Christ in the midst of his churches. Chapter 4, vision of God on the throne, beautiful vision there. And chapter 5, the vision of Christ and his rightful claim to the creation, all of creation. Remember the, the uh, sealed uh, scroll that he opened. Chapter 6, the beginning of the tribulation and the rapture of the church. Chapter 7, the 144,000 that were sealed of Israel that would go through uh, much of the tribulation and or the, all of the tribulation and the raptured church before the throne. Now, there are people that will miss the rapture, but, that's, but God doesn't give up on them. Somebody say amen. amen. As we found out, God is reaping a harvest in uh, the tribulation period. Chapter 8, the seventh seal, uh, the angelic hosts, the prayers of the saints, and God's judgments. God's judgment. Chapter 9, we, we see the angelic hosts, the seven trumpets, and three woes. These are very powerful judgments that are coming upon parts of the earth, not the whole earth, as it escalates through the book of Revelation. The judgments and the wrath of God begin to come upon the whole earth. Chapter 10, the mighty angel, the little book, and John's mission to the nations. Chapter 11, the two witnesses, and the seventh trumpet. Um, chapter 12, Israel, the overcomer and the divine protection of God. Chapter 13, the beast, the beast system. Now, this is what is really prevalent in chapter 18 where we are tonight. And the mark of the beast. And this is, this is really um, tough going for people in the earth that are still here and who... Anyone that resists the mark of the beast, obviously there's a lot of persecution going on, but God is protecting and keeping many of them in this tribulation time. Chapter 14, the end of the age, the end of the age harvest, I should say, and the wheat and the tares. And we compared the wheat and tares parable to what's happening in chapter 14 and in the tribulation period. Uh, chapter 15, the prophetic, prophetic worship, how powerful prophetic worship is, how it continues in heaven, how it continues. And when we enter into prophetic worship, just worshiping God, honoring him uh, together, how it just mingles with the glory of heaven and the worship of heaven. And open heaven and the wrath of God, how it begins. Chapter 16, we looked at the seven bowls of wrath. This is, this is where it, it really gets difficult. And the full measure of the wrath of God, and it comes in very quick succession. And there is uh, drastic results. And it's poured out upon m all of the earth. And uh, chapter 17, last week we talked about war against the Lamb. That's a phrase that I just kind of caught my attention. I had to explain that. And it's a very quick war. It doesn't last very long. Once they declare it, it is. And, and this is really interesting how, how uh, the kings of the earth and this beast system, and obviously Satan himself, the dragon, all of these images, um, and this, this uh, Satan worship that is prevailing in the earth during the tribulation, how it becomes a spiritual war, but in, in the spiritual and in the natural and I explained that last week, but also I explained how our carnal nature, the Bible says, that your carnal nature, my carnal nature, is at war with God. And how the power of the Holy Spirit breaks that off of us and creates in us the nature of God, the divine nature of God. It's called being born again and being filled with the Holy Spirit. No longer are we driven by our enmity against God or our sin nature now we are led by the Holy Spirit I just did a message 
uh, not too long ago on the exciting life, living the exciting life of being led by the Holy Spirit, and it is very exciting. So we talked about war against the Lamb and how the carnal nature unleashed and, and completely uh, demonized is at war, and it manifests in the natural in chapter 17. But it's a quick war, and uh, I'll explain that again. It's not very long, <laughs> chapter 18. Uh, tonight, I want to talk briefly about the fall of Babylon, the fall of Babylon, the great and the great harvest. So let's read here in Revelation chapter 18, verse 1. After these things, I saw another angel coming down from heaven, having great authority. This is John writing, John the Apostle. And the earth was illuminated with his glory. And he cried mightily with a loud voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become a dwelling place of demons, of, of, let me, let me read that, a prison for every foul spirit and a cage for every unclean and hated bird. In other words, this, this Babylonian system, this, this system of Satan that really is a world economic power. It is a world economic power. It's controlling the economy, controlling all militaries around the world. And we see at the end of chapter 17 how the nations begin to hate the, the, uh, the, the harlot, it says, and this, this beast system. And they begin to fight and destroy their own uh, systems. And this is after they declared war on the Lamb, that's what happens. That starts imploding. And this is getting near the end of the Great Tribulation anyway. And so things are coming to a uh, conclusion. For all the nations, listen, have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. The kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. So immorality is going to be incredibly prevalent. It's, it's, it's almost going to be worshipped. It, it, you know, it's, it, it's, it's, it's this carnal nature that is coming out of us. And I know there's spiritual connotations, but there's also natural ones as well. And the merchants of the earth have, com- have become rich through the abundance of her luxury. In other words, that this, is, this system is creating great wealth as well. And this is how man kind is when their carnal nature is unleashed they worship money they worship riches they worship the things that they can produce in their in their own ability and this is how it has always been and i'm going to explain in a minute and i heard another voice from heaven saying come out of her listen to this this is powerful this is the heart of god When we look at the book of Revelation, we see all the judgments and we see this being poured out and that. But all through the book of Revelation, and I say this again and again because it's so important, the heart of God is not to pour out judgment on people. It is to destroy the very things that destroy people. And that is the beast system, Satan, the Antichrist, all of it, and everything that they create. And God, through the book of Revelation, is always calling people to repentance. Many, you know, there was a time when I thought, well, if you miss the rapture, you're doomed. I mean, I never preached it that way. But the more I've studied the book of Revelation, now you shouldn't miss the rapture. How many believe in Jesus here? Do you believe in Jesus? If you don't, I'm going to be here after the service tonight. I want to lead you to Jesus. Hallelujah. Or bring you back. But his heart, God's heart, is always, always to the harvest, always to reach the lost. And through this seven-year tribulation period, it's approximately seven years, the Lord is reaping the harvest. The end-time harvest has not stopped. We are in the end-time harvest right now, but that is the end of the end-time harvest. And this is what this voice says from heaven and so people are hearing this they are seeing signs and wonders things are happening that cannot be explained the demonic activity is so powerful 
so prevailing. And so God in his mercy is speaking from heaven. Remember when Jesus was coming into Jerusalem? Remember God spoke from heaven and said, this is my beloved son. Remember that? He says, I will glorify my name. I have glorified it. I will glorify it again. God, the Father, spoke from heaven about the Son to the Son. And people heard it. Some thought it was thunder. Others heard the voice of God. And this is what it's going to be like in the book of Revelation and in the tribulation when you see these things happen. People aren't going to understand it, but there's going to be some that do discern. And discerning the voice of God in your life right now is so important. Being able to hear His subtleties, His movement, His drawing, His kindness, His love, His cleansing, His willingness to convict us, show us the way. All of those things we should respond to gladly because it's His voice. The Holy Spirit is speaking to you on a daily basis. Well, I don't hear the voice of God. I'm telling you, He is speaking to you. And if you ask Him to give you the ability to hear Him His still, small, quiet voice. When you quiet your heart, when you sit in solitude, I'm telling you, that's sometimes the best way to hear God. Solitude is a good thing. Somebody say it. Solitude is a good thing. Now, you may have about 15 kids running around. I don't know. But I'm going to tell you, try to carve out that kind of time. No, you don't. (laughs) I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out. Of her, what is this beast system, this satanic worship that is prevalent throughout the world? He says, Come out of her, my people, lest you share in her sins, lest you receive of her plagues. This is so important. This is what God is saying right now. His message has not changed. Come out, all right. And join the people of God. Be a part of what I'm doing in the earth. Become sons and daughters of God. For her sins, that is this this beast system, this Babylonian system, this spirit, this city of Babylon, and this this great uh, economic world power, and who it is, I don't know, but we have some idea. For her sins have reached heaven And God has remembered her iniquities. Render to her just as she rendered to you. And repay her double according to her works. So this is God judging the systems and those who are deceiving the people. Those who are are working iniquity and causing people to sin against God. God is wanting people to come out. And the systems are Very, very powerful, very influential. And we see some of it today. We see how people can easily be misinformed about things, deceived about things. It's so sad that leaders love to deceive because they have an advantage when they deceive you. They gain power over you. But the Holy Spirit is here to help you. Somebody say amen. He's here to help you discern the truth. Render to her just as she rendered to you. Repay her double according to her works in the cup which she has mixed. Mix double for her. In the measure that she glorified herself. This is it. This is the, this is the heart of the matter for the world. The world glorified. Satan loves when people glorify themselves, when they lift themselves up. I was reading an article, this little country that hardly lets anyone come into it. It's in the Middle East somewhere. I forget what what the name of it is. And they only let a few thousand people tour it. I mean, they put gold in their pillars, in their homes. They have streets. Some streets are made of, paved of gold. They have literally tried to create heaven. But these men who lead it, they want all the glory. They have gold statues of themselves. And this is the spirit that is, that is in the carnal nature that is at war with the Lamb. So mix it double. Mix her judgment and her, the wrath of God double. 
in the measure that she has glorified herself, live luxuriously. In the same measure, give her torment and sorrow. For she says in her heart, I sit as queen and am no widow and will see no sorrow. Therefore, her plague will, plagues will come in one day, death and mourning and famine. And she will be utterly burned with fire. For strong is the Lord God who judges her. The kings of the earth who commit fornication and live luxur luxuriously with her will weep. Notice this. And lament for her. They see the judgment of God on this system and on the rulers and on Satan and upon the Antichrist. They're seeing it with their own eyes. God is squeezing the evil out of the world. His judgments, he is squeezing the evil out of the world. He is evicting Satan from the world he created. Somebody say amen. I said that many times, saying it again. Hallelujah. It bears repeating. Give her, that is, she says, I, I will see no sorrow. It's therefore, plagues will come and your plague will come in one day. Her plague will come in one day. Death and mourning and famine and she will be utterly burned with fire. For strong is the Lord who judges her. The kings of the earth commit fornication, live luxuriously with her, will weep and lament for her when they see the smoke of her burning standing at a distance for fear of her torment, saying, alas, alas, the great city. It's just not the Babylonian system now. It's the very city that, that is kind of the capital city of the world, this economic power. That mighty city, these kings of the earth are mourning. For in one hour your judgment has come, and the merchants of the earth will weep and mourn over her, for no one buys their merchandise any more. Merchandise of gold, listen to this, and silver, precious stones and pearls, fine linen and purple, silk and scarlet, every kind of citron wood, every kind of object of ivory. Listen to the beauty of this. Every kind of uh, objects of most precious wood, bronze, iron, and marble, and cinnamon, and incense, fragrance, fragrant oil, and frankincense, wine, and oil, flour, uh, fine flour, and wheat, cattle, and sheep, horses, listen to this, and chariots, and bodies, of souls of men. Listen to that. They traffic men and women. Is, is, is human trafficking not a major problem in the world today? Yes, it is. And listen, it is from the pit of hell. It is a demonic spirit on people. And listen, do not partake of any of that. Do not partake in anything like that. They traffic and they sell the bodies and souls of men. I, just, that, I could not, I had to read that again when I read it. I've read the book of Revelation many times. I've never seen that. But there it is. And so it goes on. And the fruit that, there, that your soul longed for has gone from you. God is speaking to the great city. And all the things which are rich and splendid have gone from you. And you shall find them no more at all. This is it. You're done. The merchants of these things who become rich um, by her will stand at a distance for fear of her torment, weeping and wailing and saying, Alas, alas, the great city that was clothed with fine linen, purple and scarlet, and adored with gold and precious stones and pearls. For in one hour such great riches come to nothing. Every shipmaster, all who travel by ships, sailors, and as many as trade on the sea stood at a distance and cried out when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, 
What is like this great city? They threw dust on their heads and cried. This is tremendous tragedy the world is witnessing. Weeping and wailing, alas, alas, that great city in which all who had ships on the sea became rich by her wealth. For in one hour she is made desolate. I've seen visuals of all of the great cargo ships on really on the seas. I mean, tens of thousands of cargo ships. Imagine that there's no more trade like that anymore. Why? Because I'm going to tell you why here in a moment, but it's because God is trying to get the world's attention. Notice this. All of this desolation, all of this trouble, God has a remedy, though. He always has a remedy in tragedy. Somebody say amen. Rejoice over her, O heaven, and you holy apostles and prophets, for God has avenged you on her. Then a mighty angel took a stone, up a stone like a great millstone, and threw it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence the great city Babylon shall be thrown down and shall not be found anymore. The sound of harpists, listen to this, musicians, flutists, trumpeters shall not be heard in you anymore. No craftsman of any craft shall be found in you anymore. And the sound of a, of a millstone shall not be heard in you anymore. The light of a lamp shall not shine in you anymore. This is God speaking. And the voice of, bri- of bridegroom and bride shall not be heard in you anymore. For your merchants were the great men of the earth. For by your sorcery, listen, by your what? Sorcery, all the nations were deceived. The carnal nature can be easily swayed and deceived. It's, it's what happens. We're part of the fall of mankind, but Jesus has redeemed us. Somebody say amen to that. And in her was found, listen to this, in who? In this great city was found the blood of the prophets and the saints. They they murder the saints. They kill, they martyr the saints and the prophets and all who were slain on the earth. Father, thank you for your word tonight, and I ask your blessing upon it. In Jesus' name, amen. The fall of Babylon the Great and the Great Harvest. Let me just run through this real quick. I know that was a lot, but it's so important uh, what I'm going to share with you very quickly. And I heard another voice. This is what it says, remember, at the beginning of this chapter. From heaven saying, come out of her, my people, lest you share in her sins and lest you receive of her plagues. Revelation 18, 14. This is so important. God's call to repentance does not change in the tribulation. It does not. If you repent, you get saved. Somebody say amen. If you put your faith in Jesus, you get saved. Don't risk it. It's not going to be fun, right? So get your heart right now. But it hasn't changed, will not. God has always commanded his people to forsake the world. Now, when I say forsake the world, I've said this, I'm going to say it again. It's the lust of the flesh, all that is in the world. This is it. God, this is our Father's world, by the way. I love the sky. I love the ocean. I love the beach. I love the wonderful things that God's created. That's not what we're talking about here. We're not setting our heart on it, but God has given us freely all things to enjoy. Somebody say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. But here's what's in the world that you want to reject. The lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. That's what John the Apostle said. He said, all that is in the world, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life. You are to reject. And so God is always, he has always commanded his people to reject that. If you look at any sin in your life, it is from, it is the, at the root are one or all of those three sins, those three things of the world. You can trace it right to the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life. You can do it if you really want to repent and go after God. And I believe you do. And so 
These things in the world, they defile you. They deceive you. They, they capture your soul. And they hinder your faith and your love for people and your love for yourself, your love for God. These, these sins of the flesh, these things that he re- asks us to repent of, they hinder you and they will cause you to walk in so much unforgiveness and bitterness instead of forgiveness and the newness of life. Listen to what it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. It says, do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. That doesn't mean that we don't are not friends with unbelievers. Of course we are because we want to get them saved. It's just being yoked with them is a different story. That means that you're in partnership and in, in close relationship with and you actually become a part of what they're doing instead of you influencing them. Notice this. I'm talking about repentance and coming out. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? Come out. What communion has light with darkness? And what accord has Christ with Belial? And the spirit of Belial is is very prevalent today. Just look it up. I won't go into it right now. You can look it up. Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? See, God is always delivering his people. He wants you to live in victory. He wants you to live for him. He wants you to become a part of his harvest team. He wants you to be a part of his church that he's building. We're going to see very soon in the book of Revelation, the city four square. What is that? That is you. That is me. We are the city four square, the great church of the living God. Hallelujah. Come out, he says. He says this, for you are the temple of the living God. God dwells in me and you. Hallelujah. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk among them. Listen to this. This is his promise. This is what he does. This is why he's evicting the devil from the world. He is recapturing, reclaiming the world because this is his. And all the nations. Uh, Psalm 2 tells us that the father spoke to the son. I I will give you as an inheritance. The nations. Read it. It's powerful. And God is doing that in the book of Revelation. He says this, I will dwell among them and walk among them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. Therefore, what? Come out from among them and be separate. What does that mean? That just means keep your heart right. You know, don't live like the world. Don't talk like the world. Don't act like the world. Live for Jesus. You can still be funny. You can still be free. You can still be happy. You can still... People can still want to hang around you. You don't have to be an old prude. Somebody say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You're a harvester. But come out. Be separate. Let people know who you serve, says the Lord. And do not touch what is unclean. And I will receive you. I will be a father to you. Doesn't that sound good? Sounds good to me. I have a good father. I've always had a good father. My whole life I've had a good father. You know what I'm saying? And there he is. But I have a heavenly father who has greater power and greater love, but I know the love of a father. And and we're talking about Father's Day this weekend. Do not miss this weekend, all right? I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord. Even toward the end of the tribulation period, when world judgment is being poured out on Satan, on his worshipers, on his kings of the earth that commit fornication with him, and, and the people that are marked with the mark of the beast, God is still looking for that one sheep, that one person who will repent and come out of her. Come out of her, he says. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, this thrills my heart that God is still reaping a harvest in the tribulation. We see this. God is still looking. Luke chapter 19. This is what Jesus came for, verse 10. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which is lost. 
This is the heart of the Father. God is allowing economic collapse. We're seeing it on the world stage and among world powers. Why? Why is he doing that? Because it's over. It's over. It's over. The world system is over and God is creating a new one. And that's why it's good for us not to depend so much on the world system. Now, we still have to be a part. We have to go to work. We have to be a part of the exchange of, of currency. We, you know, all of that stuff. That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about this system that caused the hearts of men to turn against God and take a mark of the beast, take an allegiance to Satan. But it happens. It still happens. Instead of repenting and mourning over their sin, we see the kings of the earth and these people that have taken the mark of the beast, they've sold out to Satan and to their idols. They are mourning over their riches and over their idols and over their future hope of prosperity. God allows idols to be taken away from us. Why? Why does he want me delivered from drugs as a teenager when I start serving him? Because I cannot serve God in an idol. I can't do it. I, why did he want to deliver me from so many personal sins? Because I cannot serve God and serve an idol. I'm telling you, God wants to set you free. He wants to help you help others to be set free. I was watching these two young men on the video from Life Church Middletown, and they're laying hands on people already, casting the, I don't know what was happening, but God was moving in their lives. He's moving in their heart. God has set them free, and they're setting others free. God is shaking everything in your life that can be shaken. Let me tell you something. When the shaking really stops, you know you're founded upon the Word of God. When the shaking, and I mean the things that God doesn't want in your life, you know, if we're holding on to it, it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt. He's going to try to pry it out of your fingers. It's, it's not going to feel good. Let it go. Somebody say amen. Come out. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 25 says this. See that you do not refuse him who speaks. Remember, they're hearing the voice of God in chapter 18. For if they did not escape who refused him who spoke on the earth, and he's speaking of the children of Israel in the wilderness, they, you know, the mountain was shaking. Much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who just said, I'll just dwell among you, I'll be a father to you. If we turn away from him who speaks from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth, but now, listen to this, but now he has promised, saying, yet once more, I shake not only the earth, but also heaven. God, this is what's going to happen in the book of Revelation. We see this, but it's also happening now. Things are shaking in our nation. People are so dependent upon the, the world system, and they're mourning everything, it seems, Gas prices, this guy. I understand gas prices, but God is going to take care of you because you put your faith in him and your trust in him and you're storing up the blessing of God by honoring him with your tithe, honoring him with your service. Did you know God's going to make your dollar stretch? Somebody say amen. He's going to give you the raises. He's going to give you the raises. Somebody look at your neighbor say, he's going to give you the raises. He's going to do it. But now he has promised, saying, yet once more I will shake not only the earth, but also heaven. Now this yet once more indicates the removal of those things that are being shaken as of things that are made, that the things which cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, this is such an important word. This, this word, this scripture right here has been so vital to me. It has settled everything in my life. If God takes things away, I didn't need it. Somebody say amen. If he gives things, hallelujah, I'm going to give him praise. Somebody say amen. amen. I'm not going to judge what he gives me. I'm not going to judge what he takes from me. I just know that God is good all the time. He's good to his children. He wants to bless his children. He wants to honor his children. He wants to lift them up. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom, somebody say amen. We are receiving this thing. Hallelujah. We are building it with God. I'm building it right now in you. Why? How? By the word that I'm preaching to you. I'm building it in you. I'm here because I want the kingdom of God to be built in you. Unshakable. Yeah. Listen to this. 
Let us, therefore, since we, received a, we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace. Amen? Let's not get all bitter and anger, angry. Let's not be like the world. You know, they're just all upset, all upset about inflation. You know, I don't like it. It's painful. But I'm going to tell you, we're not going to mourn what the world mourns. Somebody say amen. Let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably, acceptably with reverence and godly fear for our God is a consuming fire. Stand with me.